Good morning and welcome to the Ackerman Covenant Church. It's Thomas here. I am thankful you are joining us on this journey today here this Sunday. Um, I'm excited because we've got a lot of stuff going on in all of our ministries. There's so many things going on. We're starting our new series with the prophets in our Immerse series, so that's exciting. If you've not gotten your Immerse book yet, you want to get it now because we start on like the 26th-ish that week uh, of Immerse, so you want to be a part of that and join us in that uh, opportunity to read through the Bible maybe in a unique way and have a different perspective on it as we go through that together as a church family. Um, also, that there's a lot of things happening, like events and things. So I know for, for um, over the next couple weeks, there's some big things going on. And this Sunday, right after church, if you have volunteered in any way, any capacity, over with our children and families over this past summer, we want to say thank you to you. So we're going to have a banquet. Uh, it's going to be catered. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to share stories and, and all the things that have happened over this summer. There'll be a highlight video and an opportunity to see what we're doing next, our next steps here in, in the ministry here at Yakima Covenant Church. And this Friday, we're going to have a wonderful celebration for back to school for kids and getting kids connected to our fall ministries. So if you know of any youth, the age does not really matter. For anyone, there's going to be bouncy castles, free shaved ice, games and activities. There's going to be a magic show. So if you are interested or if you know kids who are interested, uh, just come on out. It's going to be a fun family event. If you just want to be a part of it, come join us this Friday, September 30th, and it goes from 5 p.m. until 7.30. Um, with that, I want to welcome to service. I'm going to pass things over to Josh, and he's going to lead us in worship this morning. Enjoy the service, and we pray that you just have a blessed day today. Come thou fount, come thou king. 
So they went for me. They sacrificed to the Baals and burnt incense to idols. I taught Ephraim to walk, taking them up with my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I drew them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them as those who eased the yoke on their neck, and I bent down and fed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, welcome to Yakima Covenant Church. We are beginning a new series called uh, uh, The Prophets, and we'll be reading through the, the prophetic uh, texts in the Old Testament, the old major prophets and the minor prophets. It's a part of what we've been involved in called the Immerse. It's reading through the scriptures. So this will take us for 13 weeks. It'll bring us up through Advent, right up to Christmas. And so I'm looking forward to us that series if you um, want to pick up a book, you can easily do that here at the Covenant Church. Our first, uh, starting tomorrow, our, our, our uh, two books we'll be reading through is Hosea and Amos. Uh, I want to focus in this morning on Hosea. Ralph Waldo Emerson observed that the entire world loves a lover, 
It, you know, if he's right, all the world loves a lover, then the best love book in the entire Bible should be the, I would say, the prophecy of Hosea. I'd call him Hosea the lover. In some ways, the story of Hosea differs little than millions of stories that take place yearly, say in London or New York, Boston, Chicago, L.A., Singapore, Sydney, Australia. Uh, it's a story about broken vows, a broken home, broken heart, and broken life. Um, but in another way, it's a story that's utterly unique. I'd say it ranks as one of the most amazing in all of literature. We've ignored the story. Uh, we've clipped it from our Sunday school lessons. We've shunned it in our pulpits. But God chose this sad, sordid story of a brokenhearted prophet to reveal his love and demonstrate his grace to us. And so I'm excited about you reading through the uh, book of Hosea. The setting of the story of Hosea is in the city of Samaria, the capital city of the northern kingdom of Israel. Hosea is a young preacher led by God to meet and woo and win the young woman of Gomer as his wife. Gomer is believed to be a prostitute before marriage and Hosea, one who waited till the altar day. I imagine Gomer it was swept off her feet. A young man had, uh, that had become the hero of her heart, a uh, passion of a poet, and he had the zeal of a saint. A preacher's life is like any one uh, is, is blessed or it's ruined by the, the woman that, he, that he, she, he marries. So imagine when Hosea told by God that she should meet and marry Gomer. He must have thought... Uh, she is as pure as the lily of the valley or the person of her, his favorite book in the, the Bible, the poem of Song of Solomon. But as the days passed and, and he grew to know her better, her purity had already been taken, uh, trampled under by the passions of impure men. Yet uh, a command from God in verse one of the prophecy, Hosea is to marry Gomer. I imagine the prophet thought, yes, uh, the past is a little sordid, wasn't a very good, but since God brought us together, our future is filled with, will be filled with happiness and delight. But he was wrong. Hosea was about attempting to save a nation. He was preaching and making it known to the, the nation, uh, calling them back to, to, to God, uh, an all-out effort to avert disaster. But Gomer was not sure his heart, uh, as righteous and religious husband, and she thought it was stupid what he thought was serious. And bit by bit, Gomer drifted back into old ways of life. Uh, day after day, Hosea would return home and wondering, uh, where's his wife? Night after night, he would lay awake waiting in, uh, for his wife to return. I'm quite confident he was a prophet who must have prayed. I'm quite confident he must have taken the marriage burden to the Lord each evening. And one day it seemed that God had answered his prayer and Gomer gave birth to a baby. I imagine as that prophet held that infant in his arms, he said, that this is God's doing. This little baby will take one hand and wrap it around me and another hand and put it around Gomer and it'll bring us a back together. Call the name of that child in chapter 1, verse 4, Jezreel. Now, that may not be a familiar name to you, but it was a name, Jezreel was a name of a city. Huge during that time that people would have known what it meant. It's a pl tragic part of the story of Israel's history. It was in Jezreel that the Israelite king Ahab uh, and the Queen Jezebel were not following God. They had strayed away from God. Queen Jezebel's life came to a frightening conclusion. It was in Jezreel that Jezebel was hurled from the window of the palace. Her, his, her body was eaten by dogs in the streets of Jezreel. So uh, when Hosea called his son Jezreel, he was making his boy, his marriage, his family an object lesson about God's relationship to his people. 
It'd be like a Jew today would call his son Dachau. You know, the name of one of the horror camps of Hitler's used to murder the Jews in World War II. It would it'd be that significant to name your, name, your son Jezreel. So to name Dachau would be to bring back out of the cemetery memories of grim ghosts, days gone by. So when Hosea was called the son Jezreel, was making his boy, his marriage, his, his family a, a kind of an object lesson of God's relationship to his people. Every time he would call out his son, every time he would say, Jezreel! The public, uh, you know, say in a public place, it, in, in the ears of a, a pious Jew, it would be a reminder that in the past God had dealt with the nation's sin. Now the three names of Hosea's children, Jezreel, uh, you know, hard name to pronounce, Lor Huama, uh, means not pity, and Loami means no kin of mine. Three names that do a, a couple things. One, it gives a picture of Israel until now. And secondly, it gives us insight into what was taking place in the prophet's family. The name of that third child, which means no kin of mine, would indicate a sense of bitterness, a broken heartedness that Hosea was carrying. Through Gomer, uh, living in adultery, Hosea yet would refuse to, to get a divorce. And then one day, another blow felt. Uh, Gomer left him. You can imagine. Hosea came home, saw on the nursery door a, a note that was telling him that uh, she was leaving and tired of being tied down and wanted her freedom to and going back to the culture in which she had grown up, to her old ways. She wanted him to know that he wasn't the father of the children and she was not bringing the children with her. So you can imagine the prophet that night, he was both a mother and father to them, fixes them a supper, he, he hears their prayers, he, he tucks them in bed and watches as they, they drift off to sleep, but no sleep for Hosea. Even though Gomer left home, he, she had not left his heart. You can imagine the gossip that was taking place in the back fences of that neighborhood. The prophet's wife had left him. Uh, the prophet's wife was gone. The preacher's wife had, has, was taken off. And there were those who knew Hosea and Gomer, how she played him. And they shrugged shoulders. Uh, and they thought, well, now she's gone. She's better off forgotten. But Hosea loved Gomer, could not uh, forget her. I suspect Gomer left Hosea and thought it bettering herself, uh, undoubtedly lured from his side and whispers of exotic food and exotic clothing and dynamic lifestyle. But it sometimes happens when we take the path that seems to lead to the top. It actually was turning and bringing us to, to the bottom. That's what, that's what happened in the life of Gomer. After she left Hosea, and she passed from man to man until she fell into the hands of a man who did not provide for the basic necessities of life. In all that time, Hosea watched from a distance, saw the downward path of his wife. And finally, when Hosea realized that she was living with a man who would not provide for her, her the basics of life, she went, he went to, to the man. Asked the question, are you the man living with Gomer, the daughter of Diblium? What if I am, he said. Well, I'm, I'm her husband. Man clenched his fist and prepared to fight. And Hosea said, no, no, you don't understand. I, I love my wife. I, I wonder if, I could, if you'd do me a favor. I wonder if you'd take some, some of my gold and you'd take some of my silver and buy things that she needs. The man stared incredulously at his husband and prophet and then sees the money in his outstretched palm of his hand and thinks that no fool like this fool. 
and he agrees to the preacher's plan. But you say, it just, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that a man would be going to pay gold and silver to pay to keep a woman betrayed to him. But we find in Hosea chapter 2, verse 5, and as you will read through the book of Hosea, Hosea says their mother had been unfaithful. She conceived children and disgraced. And she said, I'm going after my lovers, my lovers who gave me my food, my water, my wool, my linen, my oil, my drink. But then in verse 9, Hosea laments. She does not acknowledge I was the one who gave her grain and new wine and oil. I was the one who lavished on her silver and gold and that they had prepared for, for Baal. Someplace in the shadows, there was Hosea catching a glimpse of, with his heart, of the one that he loved, the woman that filled his heart. And he stands and he watches as this lover of hers comes home and it's good things that Hosea's money had purchased. He watches as Gomer rises from the hut and throws his arms around this man and thanks him profusely. Uh, for things that true love had really provided. But if you're, if you're tempted to sit in judgment of Gomer, I remind you, that's the way you and I have acted all of our lives. It's from the hand of God that we receive life's richest blessings. You see it in chapter 6 there. We receive food for our table. We receive the clothes that we wear. We a warm place in which we live. And yet sometimes it's easy for us to give credit to other things. We can give thanks to everyone and everything except God providing it for us. We can thank the government for the supplies that we've received. Our, we can thank our family or our friends. We can uh, thank everyone and everything except God whom the blessings flow. You say to me, look, does God... Does God really love me like that? I say with everything in the scriptures, everything in this world, it just points to that, that God loves you. We've wanted desperately to have our own way. We've flung away from, from God in fits of rebellion. And when we run from him, and we think we've, gone our way and he's long gone and our lives are off by themselves and we have no use for him anymore then we get a tap on the shoulder and we turn around and find he's there and he says you know i love you i want you to know after all that you've done you're running and going astray that even if you continue on from here i'll be here and take you to myself again you say, well, does God love us like that? I say with everything in the scripture, everything in the word, everything in the world testifies that God indeed loves you just like that. Because we can look in the scriptures and we can see God's incarnation. He came to this as we celebrated Christmas. We can see it on the cross and then we see it through his resurrection. And yet, even though Hosea is... Paying to keep Gomer alive and healthy, she's not changed. So later in chapter 2, beginning at verse 14, Hosea decides to uh, take his hands off of her life. She planted uh, the seed and he's going to let her eat the bitter fruit. She'll reap the whirlwind. So he says in chapter 2, verse 14, Therefore I am now, I'm going to lure her, I will let her, I will lead her to the desert, and there I'll speak tenderly to her. There in that desert, I will give her back to the vineyards and make the valley of Acre. And, and there would become the door of hope. There she will sing all the days of her youth and the days that she came out of Egypt. That word acre, uh, it will come back to that idea of the valley, the valley of Acre. Verse 15 simply means the valley of trouble. Hosea is saying, I'm going to lead her into the wilderness. I'm going to allure her 
Uh, I'm going to allow her to stumble into the Valley of Acre, and there in that awful, dreadful place, I will open again the door of salvation and hope. Haven't, haven't you experienced that sometimes at a low point? It's there that God, you realize of God's love. And sometimes when we persist in our running and are going astray, almost as if God took his hands off of our lives to let us suffer and feel the consequences of what we did, we stumble into the Valley of Acre. That, that place of broken dreams and uh, broken hearts and broken lives. But it's often in that dreadful place that a God opens up for us the place of hope and the place of the door of salvation. That's what, that's what happened in, with Hosea and Gomer. Because when we turn to chapter 3, Gomer has sunk to lower and even lower into the hands of a man who would not care for her at all. And that man decided to sell her into slavery. In the ancient world, uh, slavery was an established institution. Hardly a city in which you could go. Uh, sometimes uh, during the year, actually many times during the year, there was a place where men and women would be bought and sold like animals. Hard to believe. Secular historians say that some auctions the woman would be put up on, in the auction and would be stripped of her clothes and forced to stand and gaze at the crowd. Evidently, that was such a place that Gomer was taken and Hosea was called to go. You can imagine the scene. Gomer is led up uh, to the slave block. And then folks noticed on the edge of the crowd, there was Hosea. You can hear the gossip. Well... He's come to see her, get what she deserves. She is here to get the punishment that she so deserves, and she can be sold into slavery. And then the, begin, the bidding begins. Someone says, I'll give you 10 pieces of silver for her. Somebody else, I'll give you 12. Hosea says, I'll give you 15. And somebody else says, well, I'll give you 15 pieces of silver and a homer of barley. Hosea says, I'll give you 15 pieces, a homer, and one half of barley. And the gavel sounds. Hosea pushes forward and buys his wife. But he doesn't buy her to punish her. He buys her to redeem her. And that's what it says in chapter 3, verse 2. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver, about a homer and a half a homer of barley. And I told her, you are to live with me. You must not be a prostitute. Be intimate or be intimate with other men. So I will live with you. What Jose is saying is, uh, I bought you and now I want you to, to live with me. I, I want you to be faithful to me. I promise that whether you're faithful or not, I'm going to love you. I will be faithful to you. That's the love that's demonstrated here. And you say to me, how can any man do that? I mean, how can any man go before a crowd that knew him and his profession of being a preacher and a pastor or a prophet and buy his wife and welcome her back? How could anyone do that? The answer is in chapter 3, verse 1, one of the great, great sentences in the Bible. It says, the Lord said to me, Hosea, Go show your love to your wife again, for she is loved by another. She is an adulteress, but love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. For they turned to other gods and loved sacred raisin cakes, which were offered on idols' altars. See, the reason Hosea was able to love Gomer was because the love of God's heart was in his heart. Hosea was playing the part with Gomer that God has played with you and I. God has played with, with me. God's played that with all of our lives. God does not love you because of what you do, but in spite of what you do. God does not love you because of uh, what you are. He always loves you in spite of 
what you are. But when we understand how much he loves us, we, we respond with praise and service and sacrifice. Uh, one of the hard lessons it is to learn because many of us have a bookkeeping mentality. It's like, a, it should be like, I, I do these things and therefore then I'm loved. It, that's not the gospel. It's when we embrace love and grace and we respond with wonder and worship and praise for the mercy that we've received and that we follow him and seek to live that out. So from this prophet in the valley, the Valley of Acre, we see the bitterness of heartache and we see and experience Hosea, the lover, representing the God, the lover. And so as we live out our lives in this uh, Yakima Valley, may whatever aches or bitterness or, or sadness that you've experienced, may you today experience the love of God and may we respond with uh, the grace to follow him and may we extend that to our community around here, the, the love of God. May we demonstrate to them as they look at our lives and see our love for others. That's a bow in prayer. God, we give you thanks for the prophet Hosea, for the word that is expressed through him. May we take that on ourselves, embrace and experience that love you offer. And may we demonstrate that love to those that we come in contact with. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us hear. 